Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, ever merciful. Assalamu alaikum. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon you, dear viewers. Welcome to tonight's live online lecture organized by the Talim Department UK. As per our tradition, we will start with the recitation of the Holy Quran. If I could please request Muid Hamid Sahib to recite a portion. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The portion I'm going to recite is from Surah Ali Imran, and the verses are 44, uh, 46, 47, and 48. <laughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Wa in qalatil malaikatu ya Maryam inna Allah yubashshiruki bi kalimatin min يبشرك بكلمة منه اسمه المسيح عيسى بن مريم وجيها وجيها من الدنيا والآخرة ومن المقربين وَيُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَهْدِ وَكَهْلًا وَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ قَالَتْ رَبِّ أَنَّا يَكُونُ لِي وَلَدٌ وَلَمْ يَمْسَسْنِي بَشَرٌ قال كذلك الله يخلق ما يشاء إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له كن فيكون Now, translation of these verses, in the name of Allah, most gracious, ever merciful. When the angels said, O Mary, Allah gives thee glad tidings of a son through a word from him. His name shall be the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, honored in this word and in the next, and of those who are granted nearness to God. And he shall speak to the people in the cradle and when of middle age, and he shall be of the righteous. She said, My Lord, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? He said, Such is the way of Allah. He creates what he pleases. When he decrees a thing, he says to it, Be, and it is. Jazakallah, Mu'id Sahib. So as viewers are very aware, in a few days' time, the world will be celebrating the Christmas festival. At the center of this is the birth of Jesus Christ, or Hazrat Isa, alayhi salam, as he is known in Islam, to Hazrat Maryam, or Mary. For the majority of Christians, the Immaculate Conception, as it's called, and the birth of Jesus, alayhi salam, represents the moment that God came to earth in human form a belief known as the Incarnation. Jesus salam, is also believed to be part of the Holy Trinity, the idea that God can be manifested in three persons, that is, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. However, what does the Holy Quran have to say about the birth of Jesus, salam, his role and his status in the world? Was he the Son of God, or was he simply a prophet of God? To help us answer these and other questions, I'm delighted to welcome to this evening's lecture Hafiz Fazli Rabbi Sahib. 
who serves as Secretary Dalim al Quran and Wakfi RZ for the Ahmadiyya Muslim Association UK. Hafiz Sahib is also a pioneer lecturer in Tajweed and comparative theology at Jamia Ahmadiyya UK. He holds a postgraduate degree in theology and religious studies from Roehampton University and has been blessed to lead the Tarawi prayers in Ramadan for 41 years. As always, there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions. These will be put to Hafiz Sahib on your behalf in the last 15 minutes. Please type your questions into the live chat and kindly ensure that they are relevant to tonight's topic. It gives me great pleasure to hand over to Hafiz Sahib to deliver tonight's lecture on the topic of the Holy Quran and Nativity of Jesus. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman <clears throat> Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh amma ba'du fa'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim The Holy Quran is a unique book in the world of scriptures revealed by Allah the Exalted to different prophets and there in the Holy Quran, in the text of the Holy Quran, many attributive names and attributes of the word of Almighty Allah, Kalamullah, the Holy Quran, they have been mentioned. And almost 50, over 50 names have been revealed and mentioned and recited in the Holy Quran. And the famous one is Al-Qur'an. Allah Ta'ala says, Tanzeelum mir Rabbil Alameen. As an introduction that this is a revelation revealed by from the Lord of the Universe. Tanzeelum mir Rabbil Alameen. And in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, very really famous, chapter number 2. Thalik al-kitabu la ribafi. This is that book which was prophesied on the tongues of many prophets, there is absolutely no doubt in its teaching and whatever it presents and give the historical facts or uh, any information, any teaching is absolutely no doubt in that. It would lead to, to triumph and the victory and success ultimate, not only in this world, but also in the second life hereafter. And then Surah Ibrahim, in Surah Ibrahim, we find these beautiful words, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka li nasa min al-dhulumati ilandur. The purpose, objective, aim of the Holy Quran is being mentioned. That, O Prophet of Allah, meaning the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Kitabun, this is the great book, meaning the Quran, Anzalnahu ilayka, which we have revealed to you, O Prophet, being referred the Hazrat Muhammad sallam. What is the main objective? Litukhrijan nasa min al-dhulumati nur so that you may take out or bring the people out of darkness, recesses of darkness, to the ultimate light and nur, which is the oneness of Almighty Allah and His true attributes, which have been manifested and explained uh, in this uh, beautiful scripture, the Holy Quran. Now in chapter 16, verse 37, Surah Nahal, we find a fundamental teaching or divine scheme about sending the prophets in the world. Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولًا That in every people, we have sent a messenger. Every people, we raised a messenger, a prophet. And 
to all prophets and messengers, we gave them the single message. Ani'budullah, you should worship Almighty Allah. You should manifest the attributes of Almighty Allah. Not only physical worship, but also in a spiritual, in, in letter and spirit, being the to manifest the attributes of Almighty Allah in the world. Vajtani buttagut. And you should shun the evil one, means a shaitan. Do not follow the footsteps, a shaitan. And another meaning of, uh, of this uh, word, a shaitan, a name is a taqut. And then all a divine scheme, what is after it is mentioned, you can uh, see the screen, the translation of that one, that there would be two groups. One who will be guided by Almighty Allah. They would follow the right steps, the steps of our Rahman. And those who will follow the shaitan, al-taqut, and then uh, their uh, end, they will, they will meet their tragic end. Fasiru filar di fanzuru kaifa kana aqibutul mukadibun. That if you travel about the earth, you will find the truth of uh, this uh, teaching or this divine principle, which has been given to all prophets and through their the prophets and messengers to all the world. Now in Surah An-Naml, chapter number 27 and verse number 77, Allah Ta'ala says, Inna haza al-Qur'ana yaqussu ala bani Israel akthar alladhi hum fihi yakhtalifun. Now if you open the Holy Qur'an, Surah Al-Fatiha is on right, and then Surah Al-Baqarah starts, and to the very first as a qawm or a people or a community which has been addressed by Allah the Almighty is Bani Israel. So Bani Israel, the Israelites have been mentioned, explain, uh, they are discussed a lot as compared to other uh, aqwam or nations of the people. So Allah Ta'ala says that this is the role of the Holy Quran. Has Al-Quran, this Quran which I have revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu explains to the children of Israel, Israelites, most of that concerning which they differ. So we know that the Christianity is their roots they, in the Bani Israel because you know Jesus والسلام, was basically a Jewish person, a Jewish preacher. He was a prophet, was sent to uh, serve the law of Moses. So Allah Ta'ala says this Quran explains to the children of Israel in all those matters which they differ, there are bone of contention, there are they are differing each other many and they are uh, disputes wa innahu lahu dawm wa rahmatul lil mu'minin and uh, this is a great uh, a, a guidance and a mercy for the believers because all their uh, matters all their disputes are solved in that one and then again in surah nahl chapter 16 verse 65 we find the addresses to the Holy Prophet Allah says, That, O Prophet of Allah, we have not sent down to this uh, book, Al-Kitab, meaning this book, Al-Quran, except you may explain to them concerning they are making disputes. They are differing. They do not know the reality and they, some are exceeding the limits and some are diminishing uh, the uh, true status of prophets and the other spiritual matters. And then a great role has been mentioned of, in Surah Al-Maida, chapter 5, verse number 49 of the Holy Quran. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ kitab. We have revealed this book ilayka to the Prophet Muhammad Sallam al Kitab, this book Al Quran, bil haqqi with all truth. Musaddiqan lima bayna yaday. It testifies the truth which have been mentioned before that. It, taught, it, it does not reject at all whatever, you know, before that, but it testifies to some truths which have been, you know, uh, they, they are uh, free from uh, manipulations and. Uh, uh, comprising the truth and uh, fulfilling minal kitabi, you know, those uh, books, scriptures like Torah or Injil or other scriptures of the world. That is why in Surah Al Bajin, I say, in the Holy Quran, this is a compendium 
this is a gist of all the spiritual truths which have been summarized and preserved in the text of the Holy Quran until the last day. This is, this is not only the fulfilling or musaddiq uh, testifying, but it is a guardian over the previous scriptures. Torah, Injil, other scriptures, other books of the prophets, Sohuf Ibrahim and Musa, this is a guardian, meaning is watching over where they are making any uh, making difference or they are propagating a untrue message. The Holy Quran is a guardian over all that and he will it will correct their mistakes and it will be working as a judge, a, a custodian, a judge, a final deciding authority upon their differences. Now, Hazrat Masih Maud Wasalam, which has been called a, by the Holy Prophet Sallam in a hadith, Hakam wa Adal, means the judge, you know, who is uh, giving the, you the right judgment and decision and based on justice. Huzur says in Brahin Ahmadiyya, his landmark book, and uh, this is volume number five, chapter number, uh, page number 21. He says, Yad rahe. کہ قرآن شریف یہود و نصارہ کی غلطیوں اور اختلافات کو دور کرنے کے لیے آیا ہے you should remember this point very well that the holy Quran has been sent down has been revealed to remove the mistakes and the differences between یہود and نصارہ between Jews and the Christian the followers of the Judaism and the Christianity the holy Quran has come to decide the matters between the two and Quran Sharif ki kisi ayat ke maane karne ke wakat jo yahud o nasara ke mutalak ho ye zarur dekh lena chahiye ke unme jagda kya tha jisko Quran Sharif faisla karna chahta hai he say if you want to interpret if you want to understand a verse the meaning which is concerning related to the Jews and the Christians you should remember you should think first what was the dispute between these two groups two uh, sections of the Bani Israel. Bani Israel, the followers of uh, Musa Islam, Christianity, the followers of Masih Islam, Jews rejected Hazrat Isa ibn Maryam, and that is a, you know, uh, one group. And those Christians, they believe in Jesus, also in Moses and other Israeli prophets, but they uh, are claiming or they are believing in a, in untrue way, the Jesus and they have made him not only the prophets, you know, uh, 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 rather than a prophet and messenger, which for which he was sent, they claim that he is the only begotten son of God Almighty, uh, God forbid. So this is the uh, the teaching or uh, a, a guideline given by the Holy Promised Messiah Allah about those verses where the Jews have been mentioned. The Christianity has been mentioned. Their prophets have been mentioned. Think about that. The Holy Quran does not tell us anything without any utility, without any usefulness. If there is any one word, two words, any verse, there must be a, a reason, a, an objective and aim uh, uh, in Allah's decree. And that is the deciding factor, which is the Holy Quran is going to do that. Now, gentlemen, today, the topic is very important. Today is 22nd uh, December and uh, after a couple of days, you know that uh, on the eve of 24th, the Christmas that celebration starts. Now, we like to, because the topic is the Holy Quran and the nativity of Jesus, the birth, the life story, the birth of Jesus, which they celebrate or they try, they, uh, they are told, they tell to the people, what is the true picture about a, 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 in, in uh, the Holy Quran? So let's start from the Gospels or Injil, um, which have been, uh, they, they, what they do that about uh, this nativity. So first of all, we should know that there are, the Holy Quran does only mention one Injil. Wa tawrata wal Injil, not anajil, wal Injil, one uh, teaching or one Gospel or uh, glad news uh, which uh, the Jesus Christ presented to his people. Now, this time in canonized, you know, he uh, made lawful or may say that they are authentic 
four gospels they present to us the christianity four gospels this only two gospels the gospel of luke and matthew matthew is the one they only described about the uh, birth story or nativity of jesus other mark or john they are completely silent so two gospels that's important number one point both accounts matthew and luke they agree that jesus was born in bethlehem in judea that is fine okay we also in one tradition islam also believes that uh, masih alastatu waslam was born in bethlehem okay that's not a matter of any difference his mother was mary who was engaged to a man named joseph according to the luke and uh, uh, matthew that these gospels joseph was descended from king david and was not jesus biological father and we also believe that the, that was uh, you know he was uh, fatherless mean without father he was born uh, by uh, allah's uh, great miracle it has been mentioned in the holy quran so jesus birth was caused by divine intervention and that was a virgin birth meaning as a uh and at that time she was virgin now in both gospels luke and matthew they do not describe or mention about a date or year of birth in uh, uh, of jesus christ okay there is no mention even at that time no secular text which uh, survived now after 2000 years we cannot find a precise date or year uh, of uh, the birth of jesus christ okay now majority of the scholars now assume the jesus christ was born between 6 bc and 4 bc so the calendar is failed if this is to uh, 2020 it doesn't mean that 2020 years back the on dot zero the uh, jesus was uh, born 2020 years no according to this uh, overall acclaimed and uh, researched uh, this uh, research um, there are 2000 at least 2000 26 years and some say 27 28 but at least the face if we take that um uh, 2000 2025 years at least you know uh, the gone or passed by uh, the birth on Jesus Christ now it's very uh, important that michael hart you may have heard his name because he he uh, wrote a beautiful very enlightening book in which he said the 100 a ranking of the most influential person in the history and our holy master the holy prophet muhammad sallam he put his uh, you know on uh, the first that he was the most successful person and say one he michael hart states when he comes uh, mentions about uh, jesus christ say he was born in 6 bc in his book so definitely is not on uh, at one or zero but uh, it means that uh, when jesus say that uh, they say that there, he started his ministry at 31 he was already about 36 or 37 at that time and if we take that uh, as a lunar calendar that's exactly 40 years which is common uh, uh, for every prophet that at the age of 40 allah taala give them the messengership or prophethood and jesus has no exception so that is a uh, very uh, also good now with regards to the the luke and matthew which i said that the only two gospels mentions about that one Let's go to Luke one, chapter one, verse number twenty-six and thirty-five. Now here it says that the Hazrat Jibrail al-Astatu Waslam descended and came to Galilee, and uh, a, a, and the the town was Nazareth, and the virgin uh, that uh, lady uh, uh, girl was Hazrat Mary, uh, uh, peace be upon her, and uh, that is you can also. Um, read that all that story which has been mentioned which the the points which i like to mention because i have a very limited time this uh, we have to finish within the this is a huge subject but i like to give you a certain uh, highlights or salient points i have highlighted and made it bold like that first of all nazareth because uh, that was his uh, b- uh, town um, uh, town of uh, residence nazareth uh, nazareth which is called nasra in uh, arabic as well that is why i say masi nasri that masi who was uh, a inhabitant or dweller of uh, a, a, of uh, the town Nas- nasra or Naz- nazareth okay now it say that you have been highly favored 
Lord is with you and blessed are you are the blessed among the in the women and the recitation of the holy quran which you have heard uh, in the beginning it in surah ali imran it all tells basically the story of hazrat maryam this uh, birth hazrat zakaria as a son hazrat yahya hazrat masih ibn maryam surah ali imran chapter 3 starting from verse number 34 to 52 remember the story of uh, jesus has been mentioned twice in the holy quran and this is one of them which i mentioned 34 uh, to uh, 52 surah ali imran chapter 3 so this is exactly which we can also find in here luke where is mentioned yubashiru ki allah taala gave glad tiding through uh, hazrat uh, jibril through the through the prophets now he say in verse number 32 if you go and say he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest he will not be the son of the highest mean the allah shall be called shall be called definitely is a metaphorical is great is a clear reference shall be called he will be called okay he will not in actuality will be but he shall be called because in bible son of god has been used several time not only one time it has been used over 20 30 times and in the sense of a beloved son, beloved of something like for example uh, when we say son of god is has been mentioned in the bible it means that person is a beloved of uh, allah the almighty allah allah taala likes him allah taala blesses him he is in a very good books of almighty allah his favor allah's favor is upon them that is the a common uh, ibnullah or son of god is a common uh, idiom in the bible okay then it says uh, this is the same uh, if you go verse number 32 say god shall give him the throne of his father david is very clear now the same verse number 32 he say will be called son of the highest the same verse say his father david meaning his family tree is going back his ancestor was david so his father david what is the meaning his father david and the son he will be called son of the highest so we must uh, we should be uh, you know a one person should be taking the son of uh, the highest meaning the son of al ala as a metaphorical not in a physical sense then it say uh, then again in verse number 34 that is a surprise on answer of hazrat maryam also mentioned in uh, holy quran and again in verse number 35 say uh, which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of god so in this luke 126 to 35 the story of jesus birth has been mentioned nativity where the two things that he will be called the son of god and at the same time his and uh, his uh, genealogy is linked to the david uh, you know in that family tree and uh, the genealogy the family tree which has been mentioned twice in the gospels matthew and uh, another uh, this uh, is confirmed now we come to a luke 2 7 to 8 and this is very very important and focal point to understand the 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 time of the christmas verse number 7 and she brought forth her first born son is very clear first born son it means there were other children as well he was not alone you know in catholics over 1 billion uh, catholics they say there he perpetual virginity of uh, uh, maryam mary that is there is one of fundamental beliefs as there perpetual uh, virginity she after delivering the baby she was uh, remained virgin and throughout he say first born son means that he was the first born then the second came the third came and it is mentioned in the bible that he has also the four brothers and sisters as well so the first born son was jesus and then uh, highlighted she laid him in a manger okay so uh, they believe uh, or they um, manifest or they claim that we are celebrating the christmas the the arrival of the messiah on 25th december okay december in palestine is a weather of snow and a bitter and very harsh weather very cold and snow falling at that time and a newborn a, a wise mother will also attach a newborn to 
her uh, to to her lap to her body to her skin so that uh, the person is uh, um, uh, saved from uh, uh, this uh, cold weather may say she laid him in a manger means manger you know the uh, cattle food that place where uh, oxes and the sheep they take food so like a, you know the baby cot okay next verse number 8 he say at that time what is happening and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field meaning outside keeping watch over their flock by night okay this is very clear in luke okay the the bible does not mention date and time but this is a good reference that definitely there's not a um, a, a a winter season because at that time shepherds were outside the field and they were watching and they were guardian they were watching over their flocks now if we go to this uh, very you know commonly it is available and nativity scene of jesus you will find that on the sky they have been uh, portrayed the sky and a lot of stars are there okay now in december snowing condition the harsh this uh, cannot be true if this is a true then that cannot be a, a cold weather like that now look the 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 people who are there this person who has been uh, taking a small boy golam uh, look at his uh, clothes dress and all that uh, and especially the this jesus what they have been mentioned and the background which is uh, is the stars and uh, all that uh, it also gives that that internally they know that uh what is the right time and uh, what will be the condition but at at least they have shown that now i told you about the two gospels luke and matthew they tell us about these things now there are two types of uh, anajil or gospels one are canonized the four gospels are canonized like uh, matthew or mark or uh, this luke and john there are uncanonized uh, anajil or uh, these gospels and they are called apocrypha you see uncanonized but they are widely used uh, um, in their text and their stories so one this i like to mention the arabic gospel of the infancy and the, if you go to the this website this is a catholic encyclopedia www.newadvent you will find this this one now here you will find Uh, i have just i'm not going to read that you just um, read a palm tree palm 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 in this page four times the word palm has been used palm okay now this is the continuation and say palm or tree look another palm at least six times the palm has been mentioned so a a, a gospel in fancy about the jesus this gospel is showing or telling us or mentioning about the six times the palm tree so what is the significance of palm tree which they are quoting okay now they say this is basically uh, it means according to this gospel and that was before the birth of islam islam you know started 570s and it is considered that that was uh, the gospels was already known in the christian arabs and they know about that one and the holy quran as a custodian as a guardian then came out and say right okay about the palm tree that is fine but i tell you the right story because here uh, whatever the gospel you find whether this is a canonized or uncanonized their only one objective to show that he was the son of god he was the part of the trinity, trinity and he has the supernatural powers all that one now in this way in this uh, gospel he say that jesus when he was a baby at that time immediately he said uh, bend thy branches and refresh my mother with thy fruit you see and immediately at these words the palm bent its uh, top down to the very feet of the blessed mary and again uh, which i have highlighted and he say now and open from thy roots a vein of water which has been hid in the earth and let the water flow so that we may be satisfied from thee so now in this passage one thing is clear jesus is mentioning about the palm tree giving him uh, its uh, it order to come down and give the fruits to my mother and also whatever the the water is in your roots you that should come out in surah maryam god mentions about the palm tree 
and also the water, the stream, but not in this way, not in through the order of Jesus, but by the order of Allah the Almighty, the Holy Quran. So it means this story was in the minds of the people in the Arab uh, Christians at that time. The Holy Quran played a role as a custodian, as a guardian, and give the right story. Here, the divinity of Jesus has been uh, highlighted. And the only object of these things to present that he was a son of God, he has a supernatural power, and he has all the uh, been given the kingdom of heavens and earth. Now, this is the reference which I uh, already told you. Now, we come to points to be noted. Canonized Bible uh, Gospels and uncanonized Gospels, what they present about the nativity of Jesus. First of all, canonized Gospels, as I mentioned, Luke and Matthew, glad news by an angel. Okay, we also believe that because the Holy Quran does mention twice in Surah Al Imran and Surah Maryam. He will be called Son of the Highest. I already told that will be called or is God or will be God, will be called. The important point is called. Then his father David. If he is the son of God, so what is the meaning of uh, father, uh, his father David? Then uh, it's uh, mentioning about his, their travel of uh, Mary and uh, Joseph, who was uh, engaged to uh, her. The, their, uh, uh, their travel has been mentioned. Okay, And uh, the travel was also mentioned in the Holy Quran, but only for the Mary. And there is no mention of Joseph at all. Anyway, inshallah, I'm going to come. And then after birth, Mary placed little Jesus in a manger in a wrapping clothes, clothes which I there, and uh, the shepherds were watching over that. Okay, so this is the canonized gospel. Uncanonized, we also mentioned about that one. The palm tree has been mentioned six times, and uh, a water flow has been mentioned, all that, and uh, uh, water flows from the root, and also the tree giving the fruit and going back. He, uh, Jesus commanded, come down, give the fruits. And then uh, that tree gave the fruit. He said, go up and he it raised up. You see, like he was a commanding and he got all that supernatural power. The Holy Quran is free from these or follies. And also in uncanonized gospel mention that Jesus born without pain. Jesus born without pain. Uh, the Hazrat Maryam al-Islam, Mary, uh, did not experience any kind of pain. This is in Gospel of Barnabas, chapter 2. Now, we come to uh, the about the uh, this important point I like to mention here. This is, you can find in uh, any in different uh, Jewish sources as well in the encyclopedia. Here um, is uh, saying that uh, November and December, so look, these Christian people, this Christian community, after three days, they are going to celebrate. And for the last 1600 years or 1700, 1600 years, they are celebrating. Because in the early years, Christmas was not present. Jesus never celebrated his uh, uh, birthday, not uh, his companions. This is only when the Roman Emperor Constantine, Emperor Constantine or Constantine in 325, when he uh, became Christian and after that time a, a, a one was the Pope, pope uh, who said that, uh, that there was a Roman festival on 25th of the Son uh, of God, S-U-N, Son God. They say, okay, this is a pun. This is not a S-U-N, this is S-O-N, Son of God, the highest. And we, they very cleverly uh, changed 25th December as a pagan festival to a Christian festival so that uh, those uh, Gentiles who accepted Christianity, they were very cleverly shifted back to, to know that Jesus, uh, the Son of God, the light of the world was born in that. But here you can see, here uh, if I say that uh, in comment and uh, high height area, this, that November, December, okay, and the this is uh, Jewish calendar months and the harvest season in Israel. So it is showing here that uh, November, December, that was snowing, okay? And there was uh, no season of any harvest of like that. But remember here that in uh, September, uh, August, September, and it is showing that August, September, da uh, dates and summer fix. So look, that in August, September, which is the Jewish month, is Elul. 
what is the harvest of in palestine in israel dates ripe dates and after that next month which is in september october uh, that is the early rain start so this is widely available in encyclopedias in there and this is the same was 2000 years back even 4000 and uh, that is there is no um, any change in that one so that is the corresponding now we come to the immaculate conception day which is the 8th december today is 22nd december and on 8th december within this month a feast over 1 billion catholics and some others they celebrate this uh, feast or festival and this is 8th december commonly it is misunderstood that the immaculate conception is related to jesus not at all it is related to the conception the point one day one or moment one of hazrat marjam and uh, that is 8 december not the conception of jesus but the conception of mary and they think when she was conceived by her mother hanna uh, she was uh, free from all sins and she, uh, she he conceived mary uh, you know in a pure state without any original sin and this is that they declare by uh, as a dogma by the the catholic the church that we declare pronounce and define the doctrine which holds the blessed virgin mary all that that she was uh, free from all stain of original sin and this is a doctrine revealed by god almighty and that is a binding for the faithful so this is immac immaculate conception that is why 8 december uh, 8 december that is the point one just after nine uh, uh, of nine months 8 september is all over the world by catholics which is the major denomination in world of christianity 8 september is celebrated as the birth date of uh, hazrat marjam al-islam my point is that the the misunderstanding according to their uh, catholic uh, church that this is not the immaculate conception of uh, jesus but the mary i say the people are right because that is the right point of uh, the december i cannot say that exactly 8 december because there is no way to to pinpoint the date and exactly nine months on the 8th september is the date of the birth but i would say the people are right december is the month of the conception of jesus uh, by hazrat maryam and in september his birth should be according to the truth given by the holy uh, quran that that was the time the weather of the palm tree uh, the ripe fresh ripe dates were there as mentioned in the arabic gospel of infancy so this misunderstanding is the right uh, understanding of the people and uh, the september is the right time for Jesus' birth, not the uh, December. And this is manifested by the Luke. The shepherds were outside and they were abiding by their flocks by nighttime. And in the na nativity scene, which is say, a lot of stars outside, you cannot find that scene in, uh, in, uh, in, in December at that time in nighttime. Now, what is the concept of original sin? We know that Adam and Eve, uh, the Bible mentions, they ate the forbidden fruit and through according to the christianity the they sinned and they that was the original sin and that was transmitted through physical relations uh, and then every person in the world is uh, sinner because of the sin which uh, started from the from the beginning and that is the original sin now remember i quoted say barnabas the gospel of barnabas it mentions that the mary delivered the baby jesus without pain Okay, now Mary was a human being. If and they, in order to satisfy their uh, misconceptions or uh, to uh, whatever their doctrines or uh, with the passage of time, they developed their creeds and belief. They uh, introduced different things. First, uh, first of all, they say, okay, all are sinners, but the moment Mary conceived on 8 December, she was free from original sin. And the Saint Barnabas, also, uh, Gospel Barnaba say the delivery without pain. Because here you can find in uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse number 16. So when the Adam and Eve made a mistake and they ate the forbidden fruit, then the punishment was announced by God Almighty. And the punishment was given to the women was that 
I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. And similarly, the same happened with Hazrat Maryam, uh, that she experienced a lot of a severe pain that she was uh, basically say, Mittu qabla haza. Ya laytani mittu qabla haza. Oh my God, would that I should pass away myself uh, from this world and I should be a forgotten thing. So severity of the pain. The Holy Quran, you see, whenever there is a baby, delivering of baby, a pain is a common. This is a, a natural, uh, with, but the Holy Quran only mentions the pain of Hazrat Maryam, uh, -Islam, and especially, you know, when a man, there is a person are in a matrimony relations, uh, the severity of the pain could not be uh, like that when that is a virgin birth and that is uh, Hazrat Maryam uh, experience in that one and uh, Allah Ta'ala has mentioned that. Now we come to the uh, here that Jesus as depicted by the Bible. Now, as I told you, the Holy Quran and the nativity of the Jesus and what the story, the Quran, the, the Bible tells us either canonize or uncanonize their main objective is that to prove the divinity of Jesus. He was a son of God. He was a supernatural. He was a part of the Trinity. But when we go through the Bible, this is the picture which I don't like to, uh, you know, uh, propagate. But because we are making a comparison between Quran and Bible, so it is important we should understand. Then we can appreci appreciate the beauty and the powerful teaching uh, and the, its role as a muhaiminan guardian over the scriptures in that way. First of all, adulterous link in Jesus' genealogy. If you go to, you know, the two gospels mentioned, and in genealogy, which has been mentioned in the Matthew, Matthew starts with the family tree, genealogy. And they, it, uh, Matthew gives the 42 links that from uh, father, that uh, from son of that, son of that, son of that. And we find in Matthew that there were three adulterous women. They have been mentioned, you know, in that in that link. There's so adulterous link in Jesus family tree genealogy. In the Holy Quran, Allah Ta'ala clearly says in chapter 3, verse number 34, that uh, I have chosen these people, Ali Imran, and Imrata if, uh, Imra, Imran, which was, uh, she was the mother of uh, Hazrat Maryam. So the Holy Quran, they say they were the chosen people. They were the blessed, they were gifted people. And they, you know, give the old link. Inna Allah hastafa Adama wa Nuha wa ala Ibrahima wa ala Imrana. Ala Ibrahima wa ala Imrana la ala Amin. And Imrata Firaun and then uh, uh, her mother, Hazrat uh, Maryam's mother. Inni sammaitu wa Maryam wa inni uiduha bika wa zurriyata min ash-shaytan al-rajim. And Fataqabbal Rabbuwa Allah Ta'ala, you know, uh, accepted uh, her prayer is a very pious link, very gifted uh, mention uh, has been mentioned in the Holy Quran. Then uh, they say the only son of God, second part of Trinity, which is uh, Bible mentions about that one. Okay. And then rude and regardless to his mother and brothers. Now it is very important to note that uh, in the Bible, it's uh, it shows that the mother did not believe in Jesus. His brother did not uh, believe in Jesus. It is said that um, in uh, in Bible and uh, this is um, in Matthew and Mark as well that his mother and uh, his brothers came to meet him uh, and uh, the disciples said, "Your mother has come. Your brother brothers have come. They would like to see you to meet you." They say that uh, who is my mother? Who are my uh, my my brothers? Okay, my mother and my brother are those who hear the word of Almighty Allah and act upon that one. So what is the result? Meaning they were not that. And again, in the, when uh, somebody say, um, um, you know, it's not say my mother, but also a, a, in a way sometimes say, uh, oh women, you know, he is addressing in that way. And also abusive to Jewish leaders. There are many abusive uh, uh, language or uh, words have been mentioned. Oh, uh, scorpions, all oh, the people of adulterers, all oh, the sons of adulterers. A lot of, you know, this, this is, has been mentioned, that one. 
and then uh, it is also mentioned that at certain times and at least there are eight uh, examples in the bible in the four god bible that he was shown being closer to the adulterous woman in the holy quran allah Ta'ala says al khabisatul khabisina wal khabisuna al khabisat that the right mind pe right minded people with the right mind minded uh, women and those who are untrue and khabis and uh, uh, unclean spiritually uh, uh, from different angles say al khabis is a very powerful uh, uh, compact word uh, they are inclined to these people in in a nutshell an adulterous person will inclines to adulterous women and the bible is mentioned that he was closer to adulterous women at least eight examples have been quoted here then he was said that uh, he has the desire to create disorder he said, don't say that I have come for reconciliation or Islam. I have come to create a war. And then uh, I want to create the division between uh, father and mother and the brothers. And then uh, he said that uh, this is also very. He says, And before that, musaddikali, I am testifying who are before me. And I give the glad tidings after me. Uh, the great prophet Ahmad. Bible mentioned, he says, that who came before me are thieves and robbers. So what about Hazrat Daud, Hazrat Musa, Hazrat Ibrahim, and uh, great prophets? Who came And then uh, by the Jews on his, because of the birth, they raised many doubtful questions on the validity or uh, sanctity of uh, his birth, his uh, character as well, um, in the that he meet with the adulterous woman. This is mentioned in the Bible. And also they wanted to prove that he is really a cursed person. He uh, crucified. And the, the Jews believe also he was crucified and find the tragic end. The Christian, unfortunately, they also believe he was uh, crucified. And uh, according to Bible, the one who is crucified uh, he is a cursed. So basically, uh, he was cursed in the both way. Then it is very important, and this is uh, you should understand this one: promoting unhealthy habits before eating. So let's say this is important. That uh, the this is uh, Mark's chapter seven, and especially it is very interesting to note in this COVID nineteen situation where we are asked by you know officially we have to. Uh, wash our hands at least 15 20 seconds okay we you should use the mask okay this is a common all over the world and here in the uk say how it is being implemented people are being fine so if the followers of the christianity look on this bible canonized bible you see mark 7 when uh, jesus disciple started eating without washing their hands and the pharisees and the jewish rabbis they objected to that one they say the, your, your say that why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands. They have not washed their hands and they started eating. They did not uh, find the custom. So what is the answer? This is uh, uh, verse number five. And I have just to save the time quoted verse number 14. So after, without giving uh, a proper advice to his uh, disciples, hey, you should uh, clean your hands and you should not do that one. He started a pol polemic, polemically, you know, defending them and uh, uh, making arguments with the Jewish rabbis or the scholars at that time. And he said, and Jesus called the crowd to him and said, listen to me, everyone and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, is it, it, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. The Holy Quran categorically rejects that one. In Surah Maryam, Allah Ta'ala says that he was Gulaman Zakiya. He was a pure person, okay, pure, who not only mindful of the spiritual purification, but also a physical purification because the word Zakiya applies on both Gulam and Zakiya. So this is if the followers of the Christianity, you know, uh, cannot uh, practice on this one in, in, in this situation. Look, um, this is the, the depiction of Jesus. Now, this is a very interesting subject. 
and uh, uh, this is uh, surah an-nisa which allah taala mentions about the ahli kitab he say whatever your bible is uh, giving the picture of jesus and you claim that the divinity of jesus or the sonship of like that remember this verse number 172 this is a deciding he say oh ahli kitab either you believe you are uh, jews or the christian ahl al-kitab la taghlu fi dinikum do not exceed the limits and especially in the matters of jesus christ they wanted to curse him they wanted to declare he was a cursed person and they are on the extreme ends next end you know the extreme of the christianity they say no he was a god he was a part of god allah taala says 172 chapter number 4 la taghlu fi dinikum that do not exceed the limits wala taqulu ala illa idal haqq you should only say but the truth inna wal masihu isa ibn maryam rasulullah wa kalimatu masih ibn maryam was the prophet of only and the word inna ma means nothing but only he was the prophet of allah and his word alqaha ila maryam hazrat maryam and uh, she was uh, a truthful person and this is a divine a divine plan scheme that uh, she gave uh, that birth uh, in a virgin state wala taqulu thalasa you know the trinity has been mentioned do not exercise do not claim do not proclaim or propagate thalasa uh, means trinity in tahu khairan lakum it is better to you leave that otherwise you will meet a, a tragic and different uh, punishments will come to you innam allahu ilahum wahid only the wahid the god one is allah subhanahu wa yakuna lahu walad holy is allah holy is he that he should have a son is all uh, fabricated is allah taala never adopted a son lahu ma fi sama you know this verse is a fundamental to refute the christianity and also the 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 jews claim about or their understanding or misconception about the christianity in bible we find they say that jesus said i have been given the keys i have been given the kingdom of earth and uh, heavens and the earth allah taala says lahu ma fi samawati wal ard this the whatever is in the heavens and in the earth that belongs to almighty allah he is the malik in nas malik uh, uh, and uh, uh, malik al mulk he is the master and the king of all the kingdom wa kafa billahi wakila and he is sufficient allah is sufficient as a guardian because each and every word in this verse basically refuting the different uh, creeds of the bible they say that the, the he is a shafi he has the power to forgive you he is uh, he can intercede you he can he can accept you that one he is a part of that we say wa kafa billahi wakila is only allah is sufficient as a guardian he is the one so we are basically concluding now um in this way that uh, this is uh, i just give you a quick hint and this is just a food for thought chapter number uh, 19 which is surah maryam 19 verses starting from ruku number 2 19 verses a great refutation of all christian belief nativity of jesus has been mentioned the birth story but not only birth story the main objective was telling you the christmas the right not the right time and he was born at that time and the fresh diets no not at all that was not objective this is the at the end that uh, the ripe dates have been mentioned or that historical errors only 10% of the whole message the main message was that that you should remember zalika is ibn maryam this is the true picture which is number verse number 35 he say wala taqulu ala illa idal haqq do not say anything but with the truth in surah maryam all that allah taala mentioning say this is the Mar- uh, the son of mary qawlul haqq this is the statement of the truth which is being referred in surah nisa all that means that uh, it has been clarified on that one so these are the uh, you know starting point from uh, chapter 1970 to 20, 2022 you can read that one then 24 to 26 all that and uh, 30 and this is uh, is important to note verse number 31 to 34 these are the four verses are fundamental and this is i would say better than the 
uh, Mount Sermon, which is said that he delivered a very beautiful Mount Sermon. I said, look here. When all mentioning all that one, when he came to speak to the people, he said, Inni Abdullah, I am the servant of Allah. I am not son of Allah. Atani al Kitaba, I have been given the understanding of the book of the scriptures. I know where to quote, give you the right interpretation. Wajalani Nabiya, I am not a pro, uh, uh, of a son uh, of Allah. I am not part of the Trinity. He made me Nabiya. Wajalani. Wajalani Mubarakan. He made me the blessed where I may be. Aina Makuntu. Before uh, when he was speaking, Aina Makuntu also shows, give the give that one day he would migrate to different things. Wherever I will be, I will be a blessed. Blessed means that I will be out of curse. I am not a cursed. Allah Ta'ala has made me Mubarak, the blessed, which is the opposite of cursed. Then he say, وَأَوْسَانِ salati. I have been asked to be engaged with the, with, with the, the prayers and also self-purification through zakat until my last day. وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَتِي In Bible say, he say, who is my mother? Who are my, my, my mother? He, they are the, my mother and brothers who listen to that. And uh, there is, you know, a wrong picture comes. Allah Ta'ala says, say, I am very kind, very righteous, very considerate and loving to my walidati, my mother. And also I am not a tyrant, insolent. Uh, as you claim, O oh, rabbis, that he is abusing us and he is saying, oh, scorpion and he's doing, you know, a lot of uh, uh, this... Uh, um, uh, he, he tried to fix us with the power, with the tranny and with the uh, with the force. Not. Allah Ta'ala has not made. The day I was born, I was not cursed. I was blessed. Peace was upon me from As-Salam. The day I would uh, go from this world, I will not be cursed. I would be under Salam, the protection. The day I will be raised. So the both three periods of life, the when a person starts in the world, the birth and the, you know, the physical life ends. And after the second life in both in these three uh, uh, um, uh, phases, I will be blessed. I will be in peace. So that is the, you know, the Quranic Jesus, which uh, has been mentioned. Um, here, Zalik Aisa ibn Maryam al Haq al and the last point, which is uh, the nativity of Jesus, which has been mentioned in Surah Maryam, that is the, the objective. Ma kana an min waladin. That this is uh, not uh, appropriate for Allah to take the son. His message was only that, wa inna Allah rabbi wa rabbukum fa'budu. Allah is my Lord, your Lord. You should worship Him, not me, because this is the right path. And we find that these were in Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum. That was the only focal point and the teaching of Jesus Christ, which has been mentioned several times. Even at that time, that after the day of judgment, and this is very famous in Surah Al Maida, that there will be a dialogue between Allah the Almighty and Jesus. And Allah Ta'ala says, will, Did you tell the people that uh, take me and my mother as, uh, uh, as gods, accept Allah? He was saying, No. I, I I didn't do that. I Ni'budullah Rabbi wa Rabbukum. I told you that I told them the same message: worship Allah and which is my Lord and your Lord. And that is the focal message, which in 19 verses in Surah Maryam, where the nativity of Jesus has been mentioned, a true picture. And this is basically refuting all the Christian belief, their Trinity, their sonship, their uh, bad behavior, and some other things. So we should uh, think of that. So the, this is the last slide I like to mention. The nativity Jesus, uh, this time, or the Surah Maryam and Surah Al Imran is a great way to discussing about uh, these things. Immaculate Conception of Mary, 8th December. That was not Mary. This is actually, people were right. This is the conception time of uh, Masih Alayhi Wasallam. Because just after 8th December in September, he should be born. And that is according to the Quran that Rutaban Janiya and about the Luke at that time the shepherds were out. Then uh, refuting the concept of original sin, uh, original sin uh, she uh, experienced a lot of childbirth uh, pains. 
then the correct time is okay then 12 attributes have been mentioned uh, of jesus which i told you about uh, in the uh, after that oneness of god asserted divinity of jesus is refuted and the truth of the quranic inside and rectifying role greatly manifested being the true word of god so basically um, um this is a so powerful um, words of the Holy Quran, I did not uh, touch about the 19 verses in which he made a dialogue um, to, and uh, the dialogue of uh, angel, Hazrat Maryam and uh, of that, but I think I have covered the main points. Uh, maybe some questions have already been answered. So that is the conclusion of my lecture now. Jazakumullah, Sunil Hafiz Sahib. Motion lightning and very comprehensive. Jazakumullah, Sunil Jazakumullah. As you said at the start, it's a huge topic. Um, and as you've just mentioned also, uh, I think you've uh, actually managed to answer a lot of our questions from our viewers. Um, we have run over slightly, but we uh, can extend the program just by a few minutes with your permission. So we can uh, include some uh, questions and apologies if your question is not included. Um, so um, a couple of questions I'll uh, put together. Um, so Tawheed Ahmed asks in relation to uh, the celebration of the nativity story in school. Is this something that we would encourage uh, or not? Um, and also a question from uh, Atiya Uddin in relation to the three wise men mentioned in the story. What is our belief? The important point this? is that we should understand and reflect the message which is mentioned in Surah Maryam and Surah Al Ali Imran, which has been, uh, you know, that the, the true story has been mentioned. And this is the time for the preaching. So if in the schools or uh, wherever it is, uh, uh, you know, is being that this is the time. OK, this is your version of the story, the biblical. And we believe in this way. And there is a comparison between the two. This story, which is presented by the Holy Quran, it uh, really raises the true concept and the status of Jesus Christ. And because he was a Jewish uh, prophet and uh, he was uh, abiding by the mosaic law and all that with regards to uh, and the true concept is there. OK, so with regards to the other question, the these three things, we do not uh, uh, believe in that way in which they Paid, they say they worshipped him. No, not at all. They, I would, I would say they maybe they paid respect because uh, all the the prophets they have been prophesied by different prophets. So there would be some signs, and they came to that that the right time has come. As we know that our holy prophet uh, the many prophecies were in the minds of the people. They have he has been prophesied, uh, and certain uh, the the point uh, or uh, on the signs people recognized some by his speech, by his uh, some uh, small signs what were in their minds, they recognized. So these three people, as far as they're uh, paying respect to Jesus, there is no harm to him in, to believe. But if they, they especially came there and they prostrated and say, we, this is the son of God has been mentioned, definitely the Holy Quran does not support that. And the Holy Quran does not mention about these three people. But if the people come as a paying the respect, recognize um, or uh, so the, the Quran does not stop that as far as the oneness of the unity is maintained. Zakla, Habisab, just two more questions and with your permission. Um, one question is in relation to the miracles that are attributed to Hazrat Isa, alayhi salam, that's Jesus, peace be upon him. Um, so is there any difference in how the Bible and the Quran present these miracles? Uh, and the second question is, um, were all religions uh, Islam uh, at one point? In which case, were the early Christians also following Islam means a submission. form of Islam? The one who submits to the message, the divine message, and to the unity of God, the oneness of God, he is a Muslim. And the Holy Quran has used the word muslimun many times for the followers of other faiths as well. The, as I mentioned, the oneness of God, Almighty, that is the main focal uh, teaching of the, this, the Lord of the universe. So in a sense that they submitted to the will of God Almighty, they were obedient to the, the sent prophet. So they are Muslim in that sense. But when it comes to with Alif Lam, Al-Muslim, then, you know, then now after the revelation of the Quran that be belongs to uh, the, uh, the, the religion of Islam and its followers, in the deen in the Allah Islam, you know, it is mentioned of the Al Islam 
uh, now the, the name of the religion. But as a, in a technical sense or a grammatical sense or Arabic point of view, yes, all they are uh, the Muslim. And what was the another uh, oh, okay, miracles? Yes, the miracles which Jesus uh, uh, mentioned is mentioned by the Bible more than in intensity in the uh, wideness they have been shown by other prophets as well not only the jesus you know the miracles which has been mentioned in the bible or in the quran similar uh, miracles were shown but more than you know the about uh, their uh, in intensity or uh, effectivity shown by other prophets as well jesus is no exception to that one only you know our non md molvis they ascribe certain divine powers to jesus under the israelites uh, israeliyat you know under that uh, israel uh, that uh, uh, tafsir literature they ascribe to that one that he would uh, give the life to that one he give uh, um, eyes to the people and you know he made the, the birds all that metaphorical uh, kalam and uh, they cannot be taken as a in a literal sense because the same words have been used for other people for example for the holy prophet say that you should respond to the call to the to the this prophet so that he may give you life so you cannot be taken as a physical sense but also only in a spiritual sense and this kind of the birds or uh, that uh, you know making the people spiritually dead to the living done by all the prophets more or less some are uh, became more prominent as uh, you know about uh, their status mentioned in the holy Quran. and jesus is not uh, only the exception to that Zakwana, um that's all the questions that we have time for um, mashallah, there's been a lot of uh, appreciation from our viewers for a very uh, exhaustive and scholarly exposition on the topic. Uh, you've given uh, lots of great insights into both the Quranic and biblical uh, accounts of the nat nativity account um, and also other aspects of Hazrat Isa al -Islam, and obviously a very pertinent time with Christmas just around the corner. Um, so Jazakumun Asana Jazak for your very precious time uh, with us this evening. Um, Next week on Monday, the 28th of December, our Urdu lecture returns, and that will be delivered by a respected Mirza Nasir Ahmed Sahib from Jamia UK. And the topic of his lecture is the kindness of Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that will be followed by our next English lecture on Tuesday, a week today, the 29th of December at eight o'clock again. And that will be on the topic of the essence of the Wakfanol scheme by Secretary Wakfanol UK, Masroor Ahmed Sahib. So please join us for both of those lectures at eight o'clock next week. If I could please hand over to respected National Secretary Dalim Nadeem Rahman Sahib for any final comments. Sahib, I would just like to say to Zakala to uh, Mohit Sahib for his lovely Tilawat and translation, obviously to yourself, Vakar Sahib, and certainly to Hafiz Sahib, for his valuable time and educating us on such an important topic. Uh, last and certainly not least to our viewers for tuning in again. And if I could humbly request Hafiz Saab to lead us in silent prayer so Kindly we can join. end the awesome. proceedings. Amin, Allahumma Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.